Hey, how's it going? My name's Josh from PT Startup Secrets and today I want to talk about the day or a day in the life of a PT, of a personal trainer. So I'm going to give you my typical day in the gym. So let's say it's a, it's a Monday or Monday to Thursday, yeah? So let's get straight into it. So I would wake up at 5am, wake up. Um, and essentially I would quickly have breakfast and I would be on the road to get to the gym for about 5.30 a.m. And I would drive, get to the gym for about 5.50, get myself ready, um, you know, put my meal, my food in my, you know, my food in the fridge. Um, you know, get my, you know, put my coat down, get my bag ready and get ready for my first client at 6 a.m. So my 6 a.m. is, you know, usually very busy and I'm generally pretty much busy through to about 9 a.m. Um, often. And chances are possibly potentially even later. So potentially, you know, I could be training from 6 a.m through to past lunchtime, so through to about 1, 2 p.m. But, you know, oftentimes, you know, I might have a little bit of a gap, so between 9 and 11 a.m., where I might potentially, uh, I might potentially train in this time, yeah? Um, so, yeah, so I might have clients uh, in those times, but if I don't, so 11 to, sorry, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., I might train here, and then I might eat, and then I might shower as well. Yeah. And then oftentimes from 11, p 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. would be peak times again for the lunchtime rush. So obviously here we had the morning rush, the a.m. rush, and then we'd have the lunchtime rush. So people on their lunch breaks at work between 11 and 2. So I'd make sure my training was finished by latest 11.30. And essentially I'd have, you know, I'd either have clients from 11, between 11 and 2. So 11 to 2 p.m. I'd have clients. Or if not, I would be on the gym floor anyway. So maybe I'd have a gap. Maybe I'd have a gap, um, you know, at 1 o'clock. Uh, between 1 and 1.30, I might teach a class, for example. Or if someone cancelled, I might be just hovering around the gym anyway. Yeah? So 2 p.m. comes around. If I didn't get a, tr a chance to train uh, between 9 and 11, I would now train between 2 and let's say 4 p.m. when the gym is quiet. Yeah, so then I would train, eat and shower in that time. Or I might have clients in that time. So ideally I'd have clients. So what I would do to encourage my clients to train in off-peak times when the gym is usually quiet, I would actually offer a 10% discount for any sessions completed in the quiet times. So between 9 and 11 a.m. and between 2 and 4 p.m. I would, um, yeah, offer a 10% discount because I'd rather quiet times in the busy periods, so the lunchtime rush or the morning rush because that's when I can meet members and speak to members on the gym floor and teach classes, for example. So that way I can keep packing up my schedule, packing up my schedule, um, shifting existing clients to quiet times, keeping the busy times for clients who could only train in those times and to meet new clients as well. So that's a really important point. And then from, uh, so let's say, yeah, so let's say I was to train between those hours, I'd make sure I was done and back on the gym floor for 5 p.m. So let's do two to 5 p.m. Chance I'd be training a couple clients in this time, but let's say I didn't, um, I'd, I'd be there for the evening rush between five and often 8 p.m. for the evening rush. And if your gym is anything like mine, um, these times would be really busy, really busy, 5 and 8 p.m. This will be rush hour, so the, the gyms will be packed, treadmills will all be booked up, uh, the classes will be packed, all the equipment will be packed as well. And often, oftentimes, these are when your clients are going to want to train ideally, so chances are these are going to be packed out. If someone drops out or you have a gap, I will teach a class in this time as well. And this is just purely focus of business time. This is just being on the gym floor, 
you know, capitalising because this is the chance where you're going to meet most members in most gyms because people oftentimes like to train when they get, after they get home or after they get home or after work, for example. Um, and then essentially I would leave the gym at 8pm or, you know, maybe 8.30 and then I'd get home at 8.39 and then essentially you're getting ready for your next day at work. So you're doing, you know, responding to any messages that you need to respond to. Um, maybe you're sitting down with your partner, just relaxing for, you know, an hour or so. Um, you're getting your breakfast ready for the next morning when you wake up or you're getting your meal prep ready or you're packing your bags ready to go. And essentially I would be in bed um, by 11 p.m. Would be bed. So I do have a couple hours in the evening. It's not the most time in the world but it's enough to get yourself ready to go again for 5 a.m. So I get about six hours sleep. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Five, six hours sleep. And then you just go again. And that's a typical day, Monday to Thursday for me. Uh, Friday, um, you know, I start, so Friday I'd finish at 7 p.m. So I'd be back a bit earlier. And Saturdays I'd work 9 a.m. to about 2 p.m. So yeah, so it's a long day. You've got a couple gaps in between to do what you need to do, but essentially, you know, you want to pack those out of clients anyway. And it's a grind. Like, there's no easy money out there. You know, there's no get rich quit scheme. I mean, this is probably the closest thing that you're going to get, in my opinion. You know, once you've got your qualifications and you have a passion for it, it's really easy to make a lot of money. Um, like I said, you know, when other videos, if you've seen any of them, I've had months where I've made over 11,000 in a month. I've done that a couple of times as well. Um, you know, a few months making 8K. Um, so you can make, you know, 8K in a month. You can make a lot of money. Um, and I've managed to average about 80,000 a year doing this. And it would have been much more if I, you know, nailed down the schedule earlier when I was in my early days as a personal trader. If I knew I would have made a lot more money than I have done. But that's why I do these videos. So, you know, you know off the bat what you need to be doing to be getting those figures that you want to get. And obviously, you know, this is a choice. You know, I didn't have to do this. Maybe I've got a passion for football or rugby or I've got a family and kids. Then, you know, this wouldn't be suitable. But obviously, you want to dictate the schedule you can do, you know. And, um, and as a business owner, no one's forcing you to do this. But if you want to be hitting those figures, making 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 plus a month, then, you know, Having schedules like this will go a long way. And, um, and yeah, it's just the grind of being a business owner. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. You know, leave a comment if you think this is outrageous and you can't do it or, you know, you wonder if there's another way you, you want to have a conversation about it. Leave a comment. I read all the comments. Um, like the video as well if you did enjoy it, if you found it informative, if you're thinking about becoming a personal trainer or if you are one and you want to figure out ways to increase your income. Subscribe as well to catch my next videos. You know, hit me up on social media. I've got a free Facebook group, um, you know, PT Startup Secrets on Facebook. Hit me up there. Uh, it's full of like-minded trainers who want to, you know, increase their revenue in the gym. So I want you to get involved in that if possible. And, you know, if you really want help in terms of how to grow your personal training business or the best way to start to make the money you want to make, visit ptstartupsecrets.com. I'd love to help you there. And, um, yeah, catch you on the next one.